Okay. Have you ever used or heard someone use the expression, a light at the end of the tunnel? A light at the end. To me, this sounds like the light is a destination that we reach, but how do we get there? According to the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of a light at the end of the tunnel, this means a reason to believe that a bad situation will end soon or that a long and difficult job will be finished soon. I find comfort in this belief. Across cultures, light is an ancient symbol of understanding and intellectual thought. It is the opposite of ignorance or darkness. The dark almost universally is considered to be something frightening or sinister, associated with things that we just do not understand. Light is said to conquer the darkness and bring order out of chaos. My mom did everything she could to conquer darkness and bring order out of chaos. We grew up low socioeconomic class, but it never felt like it. Every Halloween, from kindergarten to the fourth grade, my mom handmade my Halloween costumes. I was a white rabbit with a cotton tail, a luau girl. I was a witch and my personal favorite, a scarecrow. This one was not as popular with the other kids because I had real hay sticking out of my sleeves and out of my hat and I was poking all the kids around me. Truthfully, this one was not my favorite at first either because my mom painted my favorite jeans and my favorite shoes. And I cried about it, I cried about it. She reassured me that she would replace these jeans and these shoes. She always gave me a reason to believe that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Light is in her name after all, Maria de la Luz, Mary of the Light. My father, for those who had, who had a chance to know him, was the life of the party. Every Halloween, we would all get dressed up in different costumes, ready to attend a large family Halloween party where we all competed in the annual contest. One year, my dad dressed up as a wizard. He wore a purple robe with the purple cone shaped hat covered in white shiny stars and a face mask that had big round eyes and a long white beard. Picture a tall, skinny Santa Claus wearing a purple robe. That was my dad. He would rally up all the kids, my siblings, my cousins, chase us around in circles, trying to scare us. That's the kind of person that he was. Even on the darkest Halloween nights, he naturally lit up the room. I was eight years old and it was a dark and rainy day in February. We were on our way to my padrino's house. And I always loved going to my padrino's house because I had three girl cousins, um, one my age and two that are just a few years older than me. And I loved hanging out with my cousins. When we were there, my mom called my two brothers and I into the room with her. And she looked very sad. She told my brothers and I that my dad had been in a car accident and hospitalized. I don't remember much else about that day, but I do remember that my mom did not cry. She sent us to school, business as usual, trying to create normalcy for us. And it worked most of the time. One day, I was in class and I just broke down and I could not stop crying. I cried uncontrollably. The teacher sent me to the office and then I was sent home. For days and weeks to come, I was back to my loud, happy self, wearing tie-dye clothes, it was the 90s, and bright, colorful outfits. I would play loud music and blast my favorite Spanish pop rock artist, Gloria Trevi, and just like, you know, in the living room. And my mom would never tell me to turn off the music. She would only turn down the music just, just slightly when it was getting too loud. My mom never dimmed my light in dark times. She helped it shine brighter. That year we had a wedding and my cousin considered postponing his wedding so that our whole family could have time to grieve my father's passing. 
my mother insisted that the wedding go on. She said, life moves on. La vida sigue adelante. We have to keep going. And so it did. The wedding happened that year. We had relatives from all over, relatives from Mexico come down to be a part of it. And I remember that most of the girls, my sister and I, we wore pistachio green dresses and took group family photos at a park before the dinner reception. That was a bright, sunny day. And I know this because pictures show our eyes squinting in almost all the photos. Fast forward a few years, I am 14 years old. So excited for my quinceañera. Among Latinos, a quinceañera is a celebration of a girl's 15th birthday, their transition from childhood to adulthood. And it's typically a mass followed by a large, big party. It was my dad's dream to throw his firstborn daughter a big quinceañera party. And my mom did everything she could to make this happen. With the help of family, aunts and uncles, cousins, we made this dream come true. It's custom at these parties that the quinceañera go from table to table thanking their guests, welcoming, welcoming them to the space. And typically there are close relatives who will make toasts like in a wedding. And many of my relatives made toasts. Two, my two brothers actually made toasts. My older brother, who's four years older and was 19 at the time, and my younger brother, who's one year younger and was 14 at the time. And I'm sure my sister, my younger sister would have made one too if she'd been a bit older. And they each shared how much they loved me, how proud they were of me. And they also mentioned my dad and how proud he would have been and how much he would have loved to be there. I cried that day. Again, yes, I cry a lot. I cried so much. I was overwhelmed with emotion. I was overwhelmed with gratitude for the people in my life. I was overwhelmed with the love I was feeling. And even though my dad was not there physically present, his light and energy were present all around me and within me. My light shone brightly that day. Tenemos que ser fuerte. We have to be strong. Tenemos tanto que agradecer. We have so much to be grateful for. Tenemos que seguir adelante. We have to keep moving forward. These are the words that my mom repeated to us growing up over and over and over and over again. She tried to help us shift our focus from the very dark, bad times to lighter, more manageable times. My mother, an undocumented immigrant in the United States, widowed at 33 years young with four children, a house payment and no steady income, did everything in her control to keep her family moving forward and to have all their basic needs met. She never let us see how much she was actually caring. She managed the familial, the financial, the emotional challenges. And people would often say, todo va a salir bien. Everything's going to be all right. And it was because she did everything in her power to make a bad situation into a good situation. She found light. She found a purpose to keep moving forward. It was us, her family. And when she found that loose, she carried that loose through all the dark times. I always wanted to be like my mom. I wanted her strength. I wanted her resilience. I could not understand how someone could turn the darkest and worst of situations into lighter and more manageable ones. In college, I struggled financially and I was too ashamed to tell anybody, especially my mom. I had all the resources available to me. I had financial aid, I had scholarships, I had on-campus employment opportunities, I had my family, yet I struggled to pay my rent every month, month to month. I relied heavily on short-term loans and eventually I took out a credit card. One year, my roommates and I were talking about a Halloween party and I really wanted to go to this Halloween party. You all know by now that I love Halloween and I didn't have a costume, nor did I have the creativity or the energy to make one like my mom would when I was younger. And so I looked up ways to make fast money and I found um, all this information about credit cards. 
within 10 minutes of that quick research, I found a credit card, I applied to it, and I was approved. Yeah, it's that easy. And one expense of $50 as a junior in college in 2012, over the years, accrued to over 20,000 in credit card debt. I could not see the light at the end of that tunnel. My mother was so good at saving money. She survived and put all of our family through on a waitress salary. She saved all her cash tips, never spent any money on herself, didn't buy shoes, didn't buy jewelry, didn't buy purses, didn't go out to eat with friends, and definitely did not buy Halloween costumes. You know, she always showed us to save our money and to focus on solutions. And she always had a safety net. She was always there to help us whenever we needed that help to give, to share that guiding light. But the truth is my mom wasn't there every single minute of the day. Losing my father helped me find meaning. It helped me realize that I was driven to helping others at a very young age. One day in middle school during lunch, I remember seeing one of my peers and they looked very sad and I approached them. I approached them and I, I asked them what was going on. And they shared that their parents were going through a divorce and they wanted to cry. And I wanted to cry with them. And I realized I felt this deep compassion for other people, for their grief. I, I was familiar with grief. I knew what this looked like at a very young age and I wanted to be there for them. All my years in middle school, high school, college, I gravitated towards people who I felt were in a dark place, wanting to offer some, some support because I felt so lucky that I always had someone there reminding me that there was a, re a reason to believe that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And not everyone has someone there that's reminding them that there's this reason to believe. And so my father's passing helped ignite a light inside of me to help others. Now, I was the first in my immediate family to graduate from college. I'm in an amazing advising career, yet I feel stuck. I feared that I would rely on my mom emotionally and financially for the rest of my life. Um, in graduate school, as I was nearing my graduation, I, I wanted something different. I wanted to enter my next career position without this weight, this financial weight, this burden that I could, I just could not overcome. It felt impossible almost. And I knew that what I had been doing so far just was not working for me. And I had to do something. I got help. I did what every millennial does. I Googled it. You know, anytime we need an answer to a question, went on Google, how to get rid of credit card debt, learned about credit card consolidation programs, relief programs. And after some research, I found a program that seemed like it would meet my needs. And I got on a one hour phone call with one of their coaches. They explained to me the program structure, the timeline. And the first thing that stood out to me was that I would be able to pay this off within five years. Something that would have taken me over 10 years to do on my own. I could finally see that light at the end of the tunnel. After seeing that I could manage these payments, I increased my monthly payment and I've expedited my payoff plan by two years. Now I'm only eight months away from being credit card debt free and three weeks away from moving into a nice new condo with my fiance and stepdaughter. I had to do the heavy lifting. I cannot. I could not see the end to it. My light had dimmed. And so in dark, challenging times, when the weight becomes too heavy to carry on your own, seek help. Help your dimmed light shine brightly once again and help it navigate you through the darkness. Thank you.